All right, so um, yeah, my talk is about the three layers of typo, typo correction, autocorrect, spell checking, and grammar checking. Um, yeah, I've been working on ebooks since 2009. I've done over 700 ebooks. I've written tons of posts, everything about ebooks. And since 2002, I've written uh, just a massive amount about uh, LibreOffice, uh, helping people there. Um, earlier this year, May 2023, this user, uh, Cyprius, he was a Romanian user, and he was saying, oh, the Romanian autocorrect in LibreOffice is horrible. And so uh, that's what started this all. And um, so he eventually then got his changes put in, and so now it's in LibreOffice. It's great. Um, okay, so if you ever wanted to upgrade LibreOffice, um, these are the folders that you might want to visit. Um, so you have autocorrect files, you have dictionaries that you might want to upgrade. Um, so those are like these dick and af files, and, uh, and then grammar checking, uh, just go language tool. Language tool is what you want to help. Um, so here's a quick example. So sorry for te bad typos. So uh, sorry for the bad typos, and the typos were very bad. And so uh, autocorrect is like, oh, as you're typing, and Spell checking is then the red squigglies, and uh, grammar checking then is uh, green squigglies. Ah, yep, and that's exactly what I covered right there. Um, so autocorrect is, it should cover a lot of um, the words that don't exist, invalid words, and uh, very easy as you're typing, uh, easy mistakes to make. Uh, spell checking should be focused on, uh, yeah, just showing you all the valid words, and now it only underlines the, the words that don't exist. And grammar checking then is, oh, when you use a correct word, but it's used in the wrong context. Uh, autocorrect, you want a lot of, um, like a one-to-one -one, uh, match. Um, spell checking in dictionaries, then a lot of those, oh, when you right-click a word, okay, it can show you a list of many corrections. And then grammar checking, you really want it, if it points out an error, you only want like one or two selections to choose from. Um, the same thing with this. And so autocorrect should always um, be correcting like actual typos. It gets so frustrating. Oh, you're typing on your phone and it, it autocorrects this word and it's like, no, I, I wrote the correct word and it corrected it for you. Then it messed it, messed it up. And so that's what this Romanian user was talking about. He was saying, oh, no, I have to keep on undoing the stupid autocorrect. And so some users get so frustrated, they just disable the whole thing completely. And it's just like, no, no, instead, like, we should be making the autocorrect much better. Um, spell checking, uh, and, okay, grammar checking. And then uh, autocorrect, then, if it makes a correction for you, it better be, like, 100% correct. Like, there should not be errors in there. Um, spell checking dictionaries, it's okay, you know, if it makes some wrong suggestions, because you can always just select the one that you want it. And grammar checking, then, if you have way too many uh, green squigglies all around. Sometimes it just gets so annoying, but it's very easy that if one type of um, error keeps on happening again and again, uh, you can just say, hey, just don't tell me about this rule ever again. And now you won't see those types of uh, squigglies anymore. And so it's very easy to disable um, certain rules that just frustrate you. Um, so now here's some quick examples. And so autocorrect should focus on invalid words and common typos. And so here are some, some examples along the left and the right. Um, so these are, again, as you're typing, you just want it to quickly correct. Um, spell checking dictionaries, again, red squigglies. And so you just want it to not put an underline under actual words, and then you want it to underline words that are, again, don't exist, they're, they're not correct. And so I wrote here this word mistake. So it sounds the same, but there's no such word. And so mistake is spelled a different way. Um, and so when you right-click a word, then you want it to give you actual English words. Um, grammar checking, very similar, green and blue squigglies. And so I stood in line for an hour. Well, oh, oh, the person actually meant hour as in time. Uh, I runs away from the dog. Well, runs, that's an actual word, but no, in that case, you can only use run or ran. And you have no idea, both are valid. Run and ran, they both work in that sentence. And so again, it's up to the user to now pick which one they want. Um, okay, so now here's autocorrect, and I covered a lot of that top. And what you want to avoid with autocorrect is going from valid words into other valid words. 
and, um, and spelling and accent differences. So like between British and American English, you don't want it to be swapping between those. Oh, that would get very frustrating as a user. Um, so here was the example that the Romanian user was giving. There's these words uh, in Romanian where it looks the same, but then there's just an accent added to it. And so, uh, pastoral, I'll try my best to, pastoral and pastoral. And one means reverend and one means shepherd. And so it was, the autocorrect was swapping bet between these two words and both are correct in Romanian. Uh, then this next one, valva and vulva. And um, so one means valve and one means uproar. Um, and so in English, then you kind of have color and color. Of, of course, color is, ah, ah, the American spelling is so much better. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so autocorrect should focus on common typos. And so here's a few types, transposition, apostrophe, capitalization, spacing, single and double letters, homonyms, and uh, accents. And so a transposition now is where two letters are easily flipped. And so here's a bunch of these examples. And so these words along the left, there's no such words. But it's very easy. As you're typing, you can make these type of little mistakes. That's the type of thing that autocorrect should be fixing for you. Uh, you should be paying special attention to like endings. And so it's very easy for people to make typos as they're um, typing. And so here's like ing in English is used in a lot of words. And so, oh, someone might accidentally type ign. And so you might want to add a lot of those things into autocorrect. Um, and then prefixes, so what gets put before a word. And so like post is an example, or pre, um, and that's used in many words. And so someone might accidentally type per and make a typo there. Um, in English, then, you have a lot of like IE and EI in many words. And so again, you might want to pay very close attention because someone might accidentally type uh, and, and flip those words. Um, and so, again, in English, there's this thing they say, I before E except after C, and they teach the kids how to spell and everything. But, of course, it's a lie, you know, as you get further on, there's words that are exceptions to that. And so you can't just, you know, mass correct this type of thing. Um, each language is going to be different. If you want more, see that link. Uh, apostrophe errors, and so, again, it's very easy to miss, but autocorrect, good, it can add that apostrophe, apostrophe for you. Uh, capitalization errors, and so like, okay, Mike, like my name, oh, if I lowercase, if it autocorrects it, okay, that's okay, but usually that's better at spell checking. Um, so spacing errors, then this is uh, when two extremely, usually two short words, and so here's some example, like he was, is the, whatever, and so, um, yeah, you'll just now want to add a space in there, whoops, uh, you know, you, you accidentally forgot the space, and boom, if autocorrect helped that for you, Wow, that's, that's helpful. Um, single and double letters. And so again, these words on the left, they're incorrect. There's no such word. And so it's very easy to have, oh, you accidentally only wrote one or two of the letters when it's actually spelled with you know, the, the opposite. And so here are some examples. Um, okay, so especially pay attention. So if a word has like double and double, so like if we look over here, like oh, different or something, or oh no, committee is a perfect example, is M, M, and T, T, and E, E is in there. And so you have to be especially careful when you're dealing with words like that. Some, uh, many people make a mistake. Oh, they'll only have one of those uh, letters. And so similar, just, just it's a good pattern to look for is words that have double letters inside of them. Uh, very easy for humans to make the mistake. Um, and then in English, then there's words where, oh, you're thinking, oh, you add an ing to the end. And then all of a sudden, like a, a second letter appears. And so like transfer. So you would think, oh, transfer plus ing. Oh, no, an extra r pops in out of nowhere. And so, uh, yeah, as you're looking through words, uh, you got to think about that too. Um, so homonyms then, they sound the same, very similar, but it's completely misspelled. And so here are some examples. Again, the words on the left, there's no such thing. But if you read them out loud, it sounds exactly the same. And so again, these are common typos that just humans uh, make. So again, autocorrect is very good for uh, correcting that type of uh, issue. Um, so again, then pay a special attention to like Again, A N T and E N T. Again, it makes the same sound, but this vowel is different. Ents and ents. You know, it, it sounds the same, but 
people can make these little typos here. Um, so again, then you can research if you want more, visit that URL. Um, accent errors, now it's not too much in English, so English barely has any words with accents. And so if you're in Romanian, then okay, this accent issue becomes a lot more. And so in English, you kind of have cafe, naive, naively, resume. And resume, then in English, or some people like the one accent, some people like the two accents, and those are very few words in English, so I'm not, I'm not the greatest with this, but I have some examples then here from the Romanian user. And so he said, okay, this word, takuda, there's no such word in Romanian, so that's definitely wrong, but it could be depending on these accents. And so look, you can see this two accent or the, the one accent right here. And one word means silent. And then the other word is means like the silent one. And so in Romanian, then they have an ending, like an A means feminine singular and an A with an accent on it means indefinite. And so um, again, every language is gonna be crazy and, and different. And um, so anyway, so those, those were some examples. So. Um, so that was his issues with the LibreOffice uh, autocorrect was that it was, yeah, it was just, oh, it was just so frustrating. He wanted to disable the whole thing. Um, okay, so, uh, oh yeah, so then that's a lot of what I was saying is I'm not too familiar with the accent stuff. Um, so again, you guys in your languages are probably gonna know more. Um, okay, so spell checking and dictionaries. So this should focus on uh, showing you the invalid words underlining uncommon words or spellings, and then giving you, when you right click a word, you want it to now give you very high quality suggestions there. Uh, and I would avoid including extremely rare words and spellings. So here's an example, so of red squigglies. Okay, look, that whole sentence is full of mistakes. And then that other one, it says, I am wearing clothes on my back. Oh, whoops, you accidentally meant clothes. And so, like clothes right here. And so if you right click the word, you want it to give you clothes. Um, and so, uh, and then another example, this word should be underlined. There's no such word as under, oh, you meant underlined. So when you right click it, you'll get these five words uh, showing up. And so you can choose which one you want. Um, and then there's an example like I, I took from LibreOffice, uh, this word card players, it's underlined squiggly. So I right clicked it, gave you the, the suggestions right there. Um, so spell checking and dictionaries are like a balancing act between do you want to list your every single valid English word or do you want it to be helpful at catching actual typos or do you want the, the, like all the words like the rarest and the obscurest words or do you want your dictionary to only include like the, the most popular words and the most popular spellings. I mean it's a very tough balancing act that you have to do. Um, so here's a, the example from before. Clothes is actually a word and I'm like what the hell is this? It does not exist in most of the English dictionaries. And it means any of several plants of, related to the burdocks as of the cleavers, the butterbur, the cultural. And I'm like, I don't know what many of those words even mean. And so to hear, no normal human, 99.99% of the people will never use clothes. <laughs> they mean clothes. And so, uh, so yeah, so you wouldn't want, um, you know, clothes to not be underlined. Um, so here's a few more examples. So there's this word pollution. So you're, most normal people mean pollution. And yeah, it's some sort of word, Shakespeare play, meaning illusion. There's this, there's this cheese wood, which is a type of Australian tree. Most people would probably be talking about like cheese and wood, much more common words. And then this calendar is a very rare alternate type of spelling for like some sort of bird. But most people would be talking about calendar as in, oh, you're looking at the date and, and the, what you see on the dates. And so that's what most people mean. But calendar, it's some sort of uh, weird bird or whatever. And so most people wouldn't want that, that uh, bird. And so uh, spell checking programs. So then you have these dick and af files. And so for every language, every language has a dick and af file. And so you have to just find those uh, online and, and do your updates. Um, and uh, Hunspell is pretty much what you would be using. Um, there's a different programs for this. In English, then, there's two dictionaries. You have the Scowl Dictionary and then it's Proofing Tool Dictionary. Uh, the first one's done by Kevin Atkinson and then Marco Pinto takes care of like British and the other spellings. Um, of course, the American one, yes, much better. Uh, and then in Romanian, there's this place called Rospell, which takes care of the Romanian dictionaries. And uh, every language, there you have to look it up and 
it's taken care of by all different people. German's going to have something else, and Dutch is going to have something else. Um, but you'll be looking for those DIC and AV files that you want to update. Um, so here's, again, the spell checking programs, and some of them over the decades. And uh, the latest is the Hunspell, Lazo Nemeth. I don't know if he's here, but he's floating around at the conference, and uh, he works on that. And so Hunspell is pretty much the one you want. If you want more information, visit the URL. Um, so here's some useful uh, tools. And so uh, this Google Ngrams, and so they scanned in like every single English book, and then you could see trends over time. And so here's a few examples. Like then there was this word called renegado way back when, and now it's called renegade. And so you can see then, so now you can see these charts of the usage over time. And way back in like the 1820s, renegado was being used. And now you can see it's completely unused, that nobody uses renegado. Everybody uses renegade now. And so this Google engram's like, wow, it's just so awesome to see the usage of words over time. Uh, another example is, so a LibreOffice user, they were saying, oh, look, the word briar is, it's red squiggly underlined. And then there's a difference between the American and British usage. And so here's like the American usage, and you could see the AR spelling is a little bit more popular since, let's say, the 1910s. And if you look at the British usage, that, oh, no, the AR has always been um, more popular. And so this, this tool is just amazing. Um, so again, depending on your language or whatever, you'll have to uh, look at that stuff. And then if, to, to see the rise of new words, and so like the word biopharmaceutical, it only was invented very recently. And so you could see this, that, oh, it, was, it started out in the 1960s, but now very recently, wow, now it became one of the most popular words. Um, and then, uh, of course, back to American and British, color and verse color. And so you can then see that, uh, of course, in American, yeah, back in like the 1830s, they started to correctly spell it. And then you could see, oh, and then there's British. I don't have that set up right now, but who cares about the British? Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, so now, uh, last year then, or, or no, a few years ago then, there was a talk about, oh, how he was upgrading, I think, the Czech dictionaries. So check that one out. Um, Oh, and here's an example then. There was this word called Bustrophedonic. And what this was, was then this extremely rare word where, oh, if it, it, it goes one line left to right, and then the next line, it'll go right to left, and then it'll go back to left to right. And I was like, what the hell is this extremely rare word? And of course, LibreOffice cannot do this, but it was used in like ancient Greece or something like that. And so uh, sometimes you just stumble across just such, such cool words and you get sucked down the Wikipedia worm. Um, okay, so grammar checking, you want valid words used in the wrong context. And so, and, and punctuation errors. So you want the, squiggly, uh, the squigglies to show up on that. Um, so of course, language tool, language tool. That's open source, it's integrated now into LibreOffice and everything, and so, yeah, go help them out, uh, open source. But there's another tool called Antidote, and it's just French and English. Um, that's one of the best ones that I've come across in all these years. And then, of course, Grammarly, I felt sick putting them on my thing, but they're one of the more popular grammar checking tools as well. But that yeah, help language tool. Um, and so here's the type of errors, uh, A and N errors, uh, commonly confused words, whatever. And so I would recommend just watching that talk from Fostem. That's the guy who created um, language tool and when he first started language tool. And in that, he goes into much more detail on what a grammar checker does. Um, and so here are some examples. So like, oh, in English, you have this A and N issues. And so an hamburger, no, that's not, it would be a hamburger. An owl is correct, and an hour. Um, commonly confused words, and so you have like the there, there, there. There's three different there's in English. And so again, these are valid words, but oh, it's used in the completely wrong spot. And then capitalization is issues. And so like if you put an, uh, if you put an exclamation point here, well, then the next word needs to be capitalized. And so it's a very easy mistake to have a lowercase letter there. Or I visited Bill Gates. Oh, whoops, you accidentally... Bill Gates, he's a famous guy. And so you forgot to capitalize his, uh, 
his letters. And so language tool is very good at catching this type of stuff. Uh, punctuation errors, and so did I see you there? Oh, and if you put a period at the end, whoops, you meant uh, an apply, uh, I mean a quotation, I mean a, a question mark. Same. Then the next example is, oh, you, you forgot. You put one quotation mark and you forgot the closing quotation mark. Uh, parts of speech, so I are going to the store. No, that's like how a caveman talks or whatever. And so you accidentally meant, uh, I am going to the store. Uh, and so I, oh, uh, duplicates, so this is when you accidentally uh, you type two words in, the, in a row. Very easy for a human, it, it, and especially at the end of a line and at the beginning of a line. Oh, it's so easy for you to have two words in a row. And so language tool would catch that and it would underline up. I went to the, the store. And so you accidentally meant just one the. Um, and so how I quickly proofread books, I've done hundreds of books. And so I came up with much faster ways of doing this. And so you had a one by one spell checking and then I use this list based spell checking. And I call it spell checklists. And um, so you can check the entire book in one shot and you can have a searchable sortable list with word and word count and the language. You could say, hey, only show me the misspelled words. And then you can have a case sensitive search and it, it makes it so much faster to check an entire book. And um, so I've been using these methods for more than 10 years. And so here's an example. I opened up 1.6 million, like this huge amount of journal articles, and boom, now I can just have this nice list along the right side here. Um, so I can say, hey, look, find all words with a hyphen in it. Boom, all the words just show up in the list. I can say, hey, find all words with this E with the accent in it. Boom, I could see all the words in the list. Show me all capital I-N-G words. Oh, you get a small list. And so this was 1.6 million words boiled down into a nice small list right here. Makes it so much faster to proofread uh, books. Uh, foreign words, if you sort alphabetically, so A through Z, and then oh, all the Greek words just start showing up. The Chinese words start showing up at the bottom. Wow, it's so much easier to then tag languages and mark them. Um, and then again, I could say, hey, only show me the misspelled words. And so the left is all words, and then the right is all the misspelled words in the book. And so instead of going through LibreOffice and scrolling through 300 pages and oh, finding col color, bah. so you can now just see it all in a one short list. Um, if you sort alphabetically, so your eyes can then tell this peaked and peaked and Rothbard is a person's last name, but then you can see, oh look, whoops, two typos here, Rothbard and Rothbard, uh, Malone or Molone, and so anyway, so these patterns can just pop out with your eyes once you sort all words alphabetically. Um, and then if you sort by word count, then again, these things pop up where this guy's name was used 100 times, but this was only used twice. So now you might want to pay, again, special attention. Whoops, you accidentally meant to spell it that way. It's very easy to see in the list form. Uh, List-based grammar checking then, same thing, is that uh, list form, it just... This doesn't exist. This doesn't exist in any tools that I know of right now, but, but it would be so much more helpful to have this. Um, but uh, yeah, language tool has a rough thing if you use their standalone tool. Um, it kind of gives you just a giant list of all the grammar errors in the book, but nothing as neatly organized as this. I wish that it would like nest, uh, what it, would, it should categorize it based on which type of error it is or which suggestion it's actually telling you. That would be so much better because you could say, hey, correct all of these in one shot. Um, Antidote is the closest uh, that I've seen and it has something similar. It does categories on, on, along the side. Um, that's the closest that I've ever seen in real life. Um, okay, and uh, yeah, thank you. And that, that's, uh, that's the end. Um, and then I just have some extra stuff all at the end. If you needed uh, extra resources, I've been writing about this stuff for 12 years. Um, there's just so much extra information here. Um, if you guys are interested, you'll see my slides. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Any, any sort of questions? Any, anything? Yes? So that we actually can also catch uh, uh, 
catch more things like uh, when uh, in doubt, uh, is it a production error or is it uh, just uh, something uh, a mistake, uh, a lot of mistake or so? Uh, and also, on the, you also get that you get easily personalized uh, suggestions so that we can know that this person is typing in this way and we prefer. This one, this is a very common uh, change that has been made. And uh, what we really proved some of this uh, in the text revision for the individual, so uh, I'm sorry I've been procrastinating this for, 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 this for, for some years, but now I'm actually in, in, in the implementation phase. So uh, I'm very happy to see all of these nice things, that especially. Uh, Trying to combine it with your list things that would be very great. So uh, uh, I hope we can uh, talk some more afterwards. I mean, we've talked before. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yes, thank you. Yes, and so what happens is, again, the spell checking dictionaries, it's always this balancing act of, okay, do you include these rare words? Because language is always changing. So every year there's like new words, new terms that get introduced. Some become a lot less popular. That's when I showed the graphs with like the Google engrams. If you look at a word like, uh, uh, again, uh, let me see this, this renegade, renegado. And so if we were in the 1830s, okay, about 50, 50 people would use this type of spelling. But nowadays, no, no one is using this word renegado. And so renegade is then the spelling. And so if, so you pick word after word after word, and you can then see these trends over time. And then, okay, 10 years from now, Maybe, again, this type of spelling becomes more popular or less popular. And so, yeah, dic these spell-checking dictionaries always need to be, like, kept up to date and maintained and everything. And so, yeah, it's a very hard balancing act um, in that thing. Um, again, it just always has to be tweaked and updated. Um, yep. Yep. Thank you. So, one, one last question. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, you think, I mean, that's cheating would be very weird. And uh, I'm puzzled like, uh, should not we want the dictionary not to correct that because it gives an invalid uh, grammar? Is what I should achieve and would mean? Yes. Well, that, that, yeah. so for me, it's an example where I think maybe they should work together. Because it's very unlikely, but on the other hand, fixing that, we create a grammar Yes, yes, yes. And so this is why you have the three layers have to work together. Is then, okay, if we include this word cheesewood, this extremely rare word, well then grammar checking would then need to check, hey, is this... So with language tool, I, I submitted the example. AI, as in artificial intelligence, capital AI. There is this lowercase word, I, which is like a three-toed, uh, three-figured uh, sloth 
And I'm like, who the, in like Brazil or something like that. And I'm like, who the hell would be talking about the three-toed sloth? Everybody's going to be talking about artificial intelligence. And so they then wanted, okay, AI lowercase should not be, but then the grammar checking will then, you know, underline. So you'll get a green squiggly instead of red. And so again, it's a balancing act to work between all three layers. Um, Yes, yes, yes. And so again, it's a very hard balancing act. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Ready? Yep. Thank you.